Three days have passed since the release of the last episode of Spaceflight News, which means it's a time to see what the world of spaceflight has brought us again. We'll start with news about the transfer of the Super Heavy B-9 rocket to the launch pad at Starbase. The other two topics will focus on events in Chinese spaceflight. First, we'll discuss the spacewalk from the Tiangong Space Station, followed by the launch of the small Chinese Series 1 rocket. There's no doubt that intensive preparations for the second integrated flight of the Super Heavy Starship system are underway at the Starbase in Texas. In the previous episode of our show, we focused on tests of the system that floods the launch pad with water during liftoff, and today we will take a look at another significant milestone. On July 20th, the Super Heavy B-9 rocket set out on its journey from the assembly area to the launch pad. This approximately 70 meter tall behemoth with a diameter of 9 meters was transported using traditional wheeled transporters. Once the stainless steel rocket reached the launch pad, it was time for another impressive moment. Super Heavy B-9 had to be lifted and placed on the launch table. The task was carried out by the chopsticks beams, which are part of the Mechazilla system. Although the system has been used in action before, it still looks incredible, almost like something out of science fiction. But this is reality. The giant arms carefully grabbed the rocket and precisely placed it on the launch table. According to current plans, Super Heavy B-9 will fly together with the Starship 25 spacecraft on the second integrated flight of the entire system. However, the exact timing of the launch is still unknown, as there are many tasks that need to be completed. For example, the Raptor engine tests on Super Heavy B-9 are yet to be conducted, and the static fire will be one of the crucial tests on the path to the launch. Engineers will observe not only the rocket and engine's behavior, but also the launch pad itself. The previously mentioned water deluge system will undergo its first operational test. We will continue to monitor the developments at Starbase, and in the upcoming episodes, we will bring you more news. In the meantime, we recommend following the NASA Spaceflight Channel, which regularly and diligently monitors activities at Starbase. Spacewalks not only happen on the International Space Station, but also on the Chinese Tiangong Space Station. However, lately, there was a lack of visual material from recent spacewalks. Fortunately, footage of the spacewalk on July 20th has surfaced, and we're happy to use it. This time, astronauts Jing Haipeng and Zhu Yangju performed a spacewalk, and it was the very first extravehicular activity for the crew that arrived at the station on the Shenzhou 16 spacecraft. It is not unusual for Zhu Yangju to experience his first spacewalk, as Shenzhou 16 is his maiden space mission. However, what is much more surprising is the fact that his much more experienced colleague, Jing Haipeng, also had his debut spacewalk, despite being on his fourth mission. The two astronauts had several tasks to complete, such as installing a structure to hold a panoramic camera on the Tiani core module, and deploying two panoramic cameras on the Mengtian Laboratory module. 
The entire spacewalk lasted 7 hours and 55 minutes, setting a record for Chinese spacewalks. In this video, you can see the preparation for the launch of the small Series 1 rocket at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The launch itself took place on July 22nd at 5.07 Universal Time from Launch Pad LA-4. The Series 1 rocket is a four-stage space launch vehicle, with the first three stages using solid propellants. The fourth stage, responsible for precise payload orbit insertion, uses liquid hydrazine propellant. This 19-meter tall rocket with a diameter of 1.2 meters can deliver up to 400 kilograms of payload to low Earth orbit. This small launcher has maintained an excellent success rate, this being its sixth launch, all of which have been successful. The company Galactic Energy, behind the Series 1 rocket, is not resting on its laurels. Next year, we might witness the debut of their Palace 1 rocket. This will be a medium lift launcher, with its first stage potentially being capable of vertical landing, similar to the Falcon 9's first stages. Returning to the current launch, two satellites were delivered to orbit this time. The Xingxidai-16 satellite will be used for hyperspectral imaging of Earth's surface, while the Chiangkun-1 satellite will test a new satellite bus. Thank you for watching today's episode of Spaceflight News. And if you don't want to miss any future episodes, make sure to subscribe. Our show is now released once every three days, so the next episode will be available on Wednesday, July 26th. If you enjoy our content, we'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that this video might be recommended to other viewers.